uh, to all our audience members who uh, joined us from all over the world to be with us uh, in this uh, global Sharia forum. Uh, I welcome you all on board. Uh, and uh, whether you are from Malaysia, Indonesia, or Omar, or anywhere from the world, we'd like to welcome you and uh, uh, thank you for your interest to join us in this session. The College of Banking and Financial Studies, together with the Islamic Finance Chamber, is introducing a series of talks related to various topics that concerns researchers in the Islamic finance industry and, of course, enthusiasts all over the world in IF industry. Talks from industry leaders vis-a-vis -vis Sharia issues, fintech, ESGs, IF instruments, and other post-pandemic topics that is relevant for today's scenario. From time to time, IF enthusiasts need to understand how to structure Islamic finance products. Of course, it is imperative for us to understand the maqasid of Sharia and how we can structure these products in alignment with these particular maqasid, including some of them are hifdul mal and hifdul nafs, among other maqasid al Sharia that we need to fulfill at the end of the day. Sharia risk is an additional screening process that requires scrutiny and a science taught by itself for IF enthusiasts all over the world to ensure that we are actually offering a product that has a unique characteristic by itself. Understanding the value proposition that Islamic finance offers in terms of its unique characteristics, it is significant to discuss Sharia issues, especially in light of post-pandemic era. We also need to capture the same in research journals for better understanding of our surrounding and to gain better knowledge on ways we can maneuver the challenges ahead and offering the correct instruments that meet the Sharia requirements. We are delighted to offer a panel of senior guest speakers in our panelists today that assist us to take forward the IF industry into new heights. Without further ado, let me first introduce my panelists today who can help us understand the major issues on the current scenarios and how we can consider or overcome the challenges ahead. So let me start with Dr. Uh, Mr. Ashraf Goma Ali, who is the regional head of Sharia and governance at CIMB Islamic Malaysia, where he's responsible for all Sharia advisory and research affairs for a CIMB group covering Southeast Asia and the UK. He previously worked with NCB Saudi Arabia for six years as vice president of Sharia Assurance. He was responsible for overseeing all policies and procedures at the bank as well as for providing Sharia advice on all Islamic products across NCB Group, with particular emphasis on corporate, treasury, and capital markets. He previously served as Sharia board member of University Bank in Michigan, USA. He also serves a member of two IOP standard setting working groups. He holds a BSc in finance from the University of Maryland, an LLB in Sharia from Umm al Qura al University, and Masters of Islamic Finance Practice from INSEF. He's also a certified Sharia auditor and advisor with IOFI. Uh, welcome, uh, the, uh, Mr. Ashraf, on board. Uh, we are very delighted to have you uh, with us as our panelists, and we look forward for your insights. My second panelist today is Dr. Mohammed Ayman Sastra Mihijat, who is the head of Sharia at the Lusar Islamic Banking, Oman Arab Bank. He has more than 10 years experience in Islamic finance industry such as Commercial Islamic Bank, Central Bank, Takaful Company, Islamic Private Equity, and Venture Capital, Foreign Exchange, Training Institutions, and Sharia Advisory. He has teaching experience in many universities in Indonesia and also in the Sultanate of Oman. He taught at Sultan Qaboos University, the most esteemed university here in Oman, Higher Colleges of Technology. He also taught in UAE and and uh, Indonesia as well, and uh, uh, also universities as Zahra and the uh, uh, universities of Guandarma. He has delivering many papers. Uh, he has delivered many papers in international conferences in Indonesia, Malaysia, Taiwan, and uh, other countries. He published several papers in Islamic banking and finance. Dr. Muhammad, welcome on board. We are very much delighted to have you uh, as our panelist. Thank you, Dr. Fadim. Uh, our third panelist today is someone that I would like to extend my gratitude to because he filled in uh, uh, momentarily. We actually had an apology from uh, our uh, ex-panelist due to uh, the uh, uh, his son caught the COVID-19 virus, unfortunately. 
So Mr. Saptunu has uh, uh, delightedly uh, offered to replace our panelists, and we are more than delighted to have the head of Sharia compliance at the biggest Islamic bank in Odisha, which is Bank Sharia Mandiri. I'm very delighted uh, for you to be on board, Mr. Saptu. Uh, it's such an honor for you to come on board. And uh, uh, apologies, I may not give you justice because uh, 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 this was a very last minute uh, change. So, uh, Mr. Mandiri, can you please uh, provide us with a background uh, so it would be more uh, of justice to you? Thank you, Dr. Patin. It's okay, Dr. Patin. He is not able to change the virtual background. Okay, not an issue. So let us proceed with the uh, questions this, uh, so far. Uh, first of all, uh, I'm very delighted and honored for this session. It is about time for us to discuss uh, uh, global Sharia forms in a very international perspective. So uh, I am uh, delighted to have this uh, uh, valuable time for us to discuss that. In fact, this is not a very long session. It's around uh, one hour and a half. And in that, let me ask our panelists, starting in an alphabetical order in terms of our perspectives to Indonesia, because it comes first in the alphabets. So since each panelist today represent a different jurisdiction, can you lay out the ground by discussing the regulatory requirements from each country perspective? I'll start with Indonesia. Uh, Mr. Uh, Saptu, can you please brief us? Just me, Dr. Fatin, your request is not, not clear for me. Yes, uh, uh, since we are representing different jurisdictions today at the panel, we would like to know the regulatory requirement at each oh. jurisdiction. Yes. OK, OK. <clears throat> the activities of Islamic banking in Indonesia is began in 1900. 92 with establishment of Bank Muhammad Indonesia. You say before answering the question was asked by Dr. Fatin, I would like to inform you at Glenn about the profile of Sharia Bank in Indonesia. Okay, no problem, eh, Dr. Fatin. Yeah. <coughs> Certainly, go ahead. We'd like to love okay. We'd love thank to you, know thank that. You. Thank you. Uh, Sharia Bank in Indonesia, according to the financial services. Authority or call name by OJK data as of September 2020. There are is about uh, 14 Islamic commercial bank and 20 Sharia business unit. And total asset in terms of asset of Sharia commercial bank and Sharia business unit is about 39 million. Uh, <coughs> 39 uh, million dollars USD, American dollars. The total number of uh, Sharia commercial bank and Sharia business unit, unit office is 2,333, and the number of Sharia commercial bank and Sharia business unit human resources is about 55,270 people. The activities, Generally, the activities of Islamic banking in Indonesia began in 1992 with the establishment of Bank Muhammad Indonesia. At the time, regulation or arrangement regarding Islamic banking were still relatively limited, very limited, starting with the issue of government law number seven. 1992 as amended by government law number 10 in 1998 concerning banking where bank may apply to a dual banking system and conventional bank are allowed to open Sharia business unit. In addition to above, uh, with uh, <coughs> government number 23 in 1999 was published as amended by government law number no. three 2004 concerning bank indonesia a bank indonesia can also provide financing based on sharia principle to bank to overcome short-term funding facilities for commercial sharia bank in our country indonesia and the big of sharia bank regulation in indonesia is the issue 
of government law number 21 in 2008 concerning Sharia banking, and which comprehensively regulate licensing and regulation, guidance, product and services, supervision and inspection, settlement of dispute, and establishment of the Sharia banking committee, and so on. Other refer references and jurisdiction apart from the positive law are the regulation of Sharia principle and regulation. In our country, Indonesia, Sharia law and regulation are the, the authority of the National Sharia Council of Indonesian Council of Ulama, yeah, Dewan Sharia National Majlis Ulama Indonesia, where uh, the product and services of Sharia Bank in Indonesia must comply with all fatwa issued by the DSNMUI, whose implementation is directed by the respective Sharia Supervisory Board, Sharia Supervisory Board in every Islamic financial institution. Other reference for the operation of Sharia Bank product and services are the Financial Services Authority, Authority Regulation, and Bank Indonesia Regulation where the two regulations for aspect and principle of Sharia fully refer to Sharia, Sharia National Council of Majlis Ulam Indonesia. Thank you, Dr. Fadir, that I, uh, that what I can tell you a brief and grand about the jurisdiction and uh, government law and Islamic principle that arrange and manage all Sharia and our Sharia institution in our country, Indonesia. Thank you. Uh, very insightful. This is really interesting since we are comparing between three uh, jurisdictions. So uh, let us know the Oman perspective. We are interested as well to see, uh, you know, the change in jurisdiction. What does it mean when it comes to, uh, you know, enforcing Sharia compliance? Uh, Dr. Mohammed Ayman, can you please brief us? Uh, yes, thank you for uh, the very interesting questions because uh, we have three jurisdictions uh, in this uh, form uh, covering Indonesia, Malaysia, as well as Oman. Oman, actually, uh, we are uh, the same in the GCC countries. We are uh, following uh, international uh, set standard uh, based on IOV, uh, especially from the Sharia part. Uh, we are following the IOV Sharia standard. Uh, so all in GCC countries like Oman, uh, Saudi, uh, Bahrain, in the Emirates, uh, as well as Kuwait and Qatar, uh, all of us we are following IOP Sharia standard. So for uh, <coughs> uh, Oman itself, although we are uh, quite in in terms of implementing Islamic banking in the market, however, uh, in a, we are quite in a, uh, fast uh, in a, the one of the fastest growth as per the SNP uh, report 2017. We are starting uh, the Islamic banking uh, operations uh, uh, January 2013 based on the uh, Royal Decree number 69, uh, 2012. Uh, uh, through this Royal Decree, there are you know, amendment of you know uh, Royal Decree on banking law number you know uh, 14, 2000 by additional additioning uh, the uh, six you know pillars in the banking law uh, from 1,121 in you know, uh, uh, to 126, you know, the very interesting in this, you know, uh, uh, additional in banking law is, is that uh, in doing the transaction of Islamic banking in uh, in Oman, uh, we are exempted for any additional fees, especially uh, when we are doing a, a, a sell and, uh, uh, you know, buy transaction. And you know, uh, it is quite uh, different uh, compared to Indonesia where they are still arguing with the tax authority that uh, when the we are in a, they are doing a morobaha uh, the tax also still wants to take a double tax on that you know uh, transaction but oman uh, since we are you know uh, learning from uh, many jurisdictions like indonesia malaysia, in malaysia as well as our in you know, uh, uh, counterpart in uh, you know, regions like uh, emirates we are in uh, the authorities of Oman uh, are already, uh, you know, uh, exempted all these kind of fees. So that's why uh, when it comes to, you know, uh, in a standard, we are implementing uh, the in international best standard that, you know, implemented by uh, Global. 
So we are following international best practice. So that's why uh, when it comes into you know, uh, jurisdictions, uh, when it comes into the uh, standards, we are already uh, one of the uh, fastest divisions that are you know, implementing uh, 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 international best standards, such as, for example, uh, last you know uh, last three years back, uh, people are still arguing about external share audit. Uh, Oman before the, uh, uh, people are arguing about the important things of the external share audit. We are already implementing the external the you know uh, uh, central bank of Oman enforcing all Islamic finance institutions to adopt the external share audit. So we are uh, one of the first uh, who are you know, adopting external share audit uh, in the in the you know, global. I think that's in uh, our brief uh, from Oman's perspective, uh, Dr. Fabian. Many thanks. Uh, this is really insightful as well and very lengthy, in fact. Uh, apologize to our audience members. Uh, uh, we had uh, Mr. Ashraf Goma Ali confirmed us one hour ago that he will be on board. So in the notion of the Arabic say, meaning that uh, uh, provide your fellow brother 70 excuses. So if you didn't find, uh, pro so probably you are his excuse. So uh, let us wait on board for the Malaysian perspective, uh, uh, hopefully when he joins in. So uh, I'll pick up from where uh, Dr. Mohammed Iman uh, uh, left. I'll ask you a question. Uh, this is quite interesting. You know, we are a different jurisdiction. We are following different regulatory framework. Uh, we are following different standards than the uh, Indonesian and the uh, Malaysian uh, jurisdictions. Uh, there are a couple of regulatory frame. Uh, uh, there are a couple of standards that are IOV permitted, which is the most controversial one. And I'd like to open this topic to enlighten our audience members with the discussions regarding tawarruq. Tawarruq is permitted in the IOV standards, and uh, regulatory wise, we are not offering it at the uh, uh, Oman jurisdiction for uh, uh, possible reasons. We would like to know why. Go ahead, Dr. Mohammed. Uh, all right. Uh, actually, uh, Tawaru is the one of the you know uh, very discussed topic uh, worldwide, especially in the global you know Islamic economic forums. Uh, there are always you know debate, um, uh, especially amongst the economists, you know, uh, professor in economics. Uh, there are also the debate uh, with also with the Shara scholars. Uh, well, you know. Uh, People are arguing this is uh, one of the best way in, uh, to provide, you know, uh, financing to uh, to people. Uh, well, you know, uh, there are many uh, other you know, alternatives. Uh, uh, not only Tawaru we can do. There are many alternatives of Akad. Although Tawaru itself, you know, it is you know allowed with in, under IOF uh, share standard, uh, <clears throat> like in monetization. So you can see uh, Tawaru in uh, share standard. IOP number, you know, I think number 23. Uh, uh, so uh, as long as Islamic Bank, they are following the standard, you know, following the, you know, the uh, guideline that has been, you know, uh, set by IOP, I think it, there is no issue. However, why Oman, uh, we are trying to avoid this kind of contract because this kind of contract, uh, there are a lot of debates among the, you know, uh, scholars. Uh, and, and not scholars among the you know uh, public, uh, and uh, also there are many criticism in terms of the implementation of Tawar when it comes into the uh, banking you know uh, financings and uh, so that's why Oman uh, has looked this one as uh, you know uh, not a good you know, uh, contract when uh, because we are still new and uh, the idea is that. Uh, can Oman you know, grow the Islamic banking industry or Islamic banking entities without, you know, implementing the Tawaru concept in the in the, in, the, in this region? So we found that, uh, and and many many people are, you know, uh, quite surprised. How come Oman uh, uh, they don't have any Tawaru, you know, uh, best product in their Islamic banking entities, you know, uh, product? while they are able to grow faster than other regions. This is, uh, we have to make a, a research as well, because uh, uh, I think many people, you know, uh, especially uh, when it comes into the uh, practitioners saying that because Tawaru is quite in the market, uh, but Oman uh, 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 able to show we are not 
you know, implementing any tower-based product, but we are able to grow faster than any other region. Uh, so uh, as the per SNP, you know, report 2017, uh, we are able to, you know, uh, having highest, you know, uh, you know, uh, growth in the in the, in the global 73%, uh, you know, growth. This is one of the fastest, as well as uh, we are able to show to the market that uh, our, you know, uh, target uh, on the market share, you know, uh, perspective, we are able to, you know, achieve more than what e what has been planned by Central Bank of Oman. You know, the Central Bank of Oman is saying, I think they are, they are saying that uh, on 20, I think 2022 or 2020, Oman, Oman has be, uh, has to be able to uh, have a market share of 10%. But on 2019, we are already reached almost 14% of market share. Compared to Indonesia, they are uh, still uh, struggling with the six uh, percent now. Uh, I think this is uh, one you, of, you know uh, good example. There is one of uh, uh, research is quite as well. Uh, how Oman able to uh, grow the Islamic banking without the our best product? Okay, uh, very interesting. So even without the controversial, uh, you know, uh, Tawarok, uh, the market share in Oman is uh, uh, growing. And this uh, only proves how much, uh, you know, uh, Islamic finance instruments are in demand uh, in the region. So uh, let me go to Mr. Sabtu. And uh, uh, can you uh, please uh, outline to us how much the tawarruq, uh, you know, uh, as an instrument is used for products in Indonesia? Okay, thank you, Dr. Fatid, for the question. First, I have to say and tell you all that a Sharia standard that is followed is our Sharia Council, National Council, or DSNMUI Fatwa. We review all Sharia financial institutions, including Sharia Bank, are required to follow the rule and regulation contained in the Fatwa. So far, all DSNMUI Fatwa can accommodate market need. Only this one thing, um, Dr. Fatin, yeah, the Tawaru. Uh, in general, in my opinion, Tawarok is about Mubah. Wali anna jamharatul ulama abahu hahadhi al-aqad, yani aqdid Tawarok, yani Mubah. Because the majority of ulama lot is Tawarok mu'amalah, yeah? Especially for bargaining with is gwayru mundobit. Tawarok naw'an, yani mundobit wa ghari mundobit, or undesigned structure. In this case, a third party is the second buyer in Tawarok uh, contract, uh, uh, and we do not deny that this issue is included in the Khilafiyah uh, case among the ulama Islamic scholar, yani, yani masala Khilafiyah bina fukuha al Muslimin, yani an bab tawaruk yani. So far, the our mufti Desan Mui uh, fatwa has not issued a fatwa related to tawaruk until now. I don't know the reason. Our mufti Desan Mui has not issued a fatwa related to the tawaruk until now. On this base, we are in Indonesia, Sharia banking in Indonesia, we have not optimized the tawaruk contract or scheme for Sharia product and services in our business, Dr. Fatin. Thank you. I have no comment, additional comment more than that. Thank you. Thank you very much. We wanted to know the kind of products offered, uh, which has uh, tawaruk as the underlying uh, contract. So is it like credit card? Uh, what exactly is used in Indonesia when it comes to uh, offering the uh, IF products? Sorry? Uh, we wanted to know the products that use Tawarok as an underlying contract. Is it like credit card or uh, oh, commodity? Okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 Or maybe money market. Uh, frankly, in our banking, Islamic banking in Indonesia, there is no one use and optimize Tawaruk scheme in their product and services, Dr. Fatih. There is no one. Uh, majority in our Islamic bank in Indonesia is using, are using uh, Murobaha as a contract of their product and services. Our credit card, Islamic credit card uh, in our country, in the structure of Islamic credit card in Indonesia used to contract scheme. Two contracts came. First, uh, kafala bil ujro. Kafala bil ujro. Uh, yeah, this contract is used for cut tra transaction at merchant, where the Sharia Bank as a card is your guaranteed 
payment of debt or cardholder obligation to the merchant. For this service, for the services, Saria Bank charge fees to cardholders accordingly with the policy of the the issuing bank, Kafala Bil Udra. And the second scam is for cash withdrawal at an ATM machine, automatic teller machine. For this transaction, uh, the the card holder can use his card, an Islamic credit card, I mean, uh, for cash withdrawal and uh, under Ijaro contract using under Ijaro court and court and Ijaro contract. The court contract is used as the basis for cash withdrawal and the Ijaro contract is used for leasing ATM network, port, machine and system to card holder. For these services, the card holder is also charge a fee by Islamic bank as a card issuer. In principle, because the bank is the provider of payment system services and services to card holder, the imposition of this fee is based on this. Yeah. All services, uh, ATM network, uh, IT, and other network, that's based on fee charge to the card holder. In Indonesia, there are only two Islamic banks. Only two Islamic banks that issue Islamic credit card product and services, namely Bank Negara Indonesia Syariah, or we call it with Benis, and mm -hmm. CMB Syariah. Just only two Islamic banks issued this product or credit card. Thank you, Dr. Fatih. Okay, thank you very much. This is quite uh, elaborate. Uh, now, uh, let me ask you uh, a very uh, a different question now. Uh, with reference, I'll go to you, uh, uh, Dr. Ayman. How the banks are dealing with the post-pandemic issues with reference to restructuring finance? Of course, you know we are dealing with a different uh, scenario altogether with the COVID-19 situation. Uh, when it comes to restructuring finance, what are the Sharia implications and issues that you are dealing with at the moment? And if there is any stimulus packages or anything that uh, you know thought uh, by the government, please elaborate on this point. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Fat, uh, Fatin. A very interesting question, especially during this uh, uh, pandemic. Um, actually, we are uh, really struggling during this, uh, you know, uh, COVID-19 outbreak, uh, especially during the management meeting. Uh, we are still, you know, are in, uh, discussing. I think this is the time that we have to, you know, uh, able to uh, help our society because um, uh, before uh, pandemic we are all, always thinking how to maximize the profit of the banks uh, and then after we uh, discuss with the management and discuss with the Sharia board uh, I think we uh, are come with the you know uh, uh, good you know uh, decisions then uh, this is the time for Islamic bank to uh, you know uh, play a big role major role to uh, our society, you know, uh, we, we have to help them. We have to help the economy of the country. We have to, you know, uh, we have to, uh, you know, able to uh, bring them back into the, you know, uh, the board, right? Uh, so uh, there are many restructuring that we are not uh, taking any kind of fees. There are many, you know, uh, even if it is, you know, Ijaro, uh, we are able to, uh, this is the time uh, for a social, how Islamic Bank uh, providing a big social impact to the society and able to, you know, uh, uphold the economy of the countries. Uh, so that's why, even uh, from the zakat perspective, we are, uh, you know, encouraging people to pay zakat early before uh, before in time. So, for example, if you have, uh, uh, if you're obliged to pay zakat, for example, after six months, you don't need to wait after six months. You are, you can, uh, you know. You are you, know, you have to pay now because there are many people in need, and, uh, so that's why we are also uh, participate in the you know in the, in helping uh, the you know uh, uh, the initiations from the you know uh, uh, his in, uh, Majesty uh, Sultan Haisam in order to uh, provide uh, you know uh, fund to the uh, Sunduk uh, this uh, society fund. So uh, there are many uh, uh, things that uh, Islamic Bank already uh, participate in order to reduce the you know the the effect of the COVID-19. 
so uh, this is uh, so that's why uh, we come to a conclusion that it is the time for Islamic Bank to show uh, we are not only uh, focusing on the profit maximization, but we are also in uh, focusing on how uh, we give you know a uh, uh, hand our hand to the people and the, to the uh, to the public. So uh, that's why uh, many yeah. uh, our strategy uh, that are uh, focusing helping the people, not on uh, on the uh, profit maximization. Because um, yes, from the in, uh, on the in only one contact we are not able to increase the profit. But uh, like uh, such as Morobaha, for uh, for other you know uh, 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 contract best product like for example Ijaro, Musharuk uh, Amutanas, Nakiso, Wakala Bilajesmar. We are allowed to uh, increase the profit as per the agreed between the banks and the customers, but we are not doing so because uh, we want to, uh, you know, uh, to help our customers because it, this is very difficult to all. Uh, so I think this Thank is uh, what Oman has been done yes. to uh, their customers. Thank you, Dr. Ayman. So this is uh, literally uh, taken into the account of the ayah fanadiratun ila maisara, taking consideration of people who are underprivileged and are affected by this uh, uh, pandemic. Uh, we would yeah. like to hear uh, from the Indonesian perspective when it comes to restructuring finance. What's happening? What are the challenges? And uh, you know how the government uh, or the Islamic Bank is dealing with uh, this pandemic? Uh, thank you, Dr. Fatin, for the question. Uh, yes, uh, Allah has said in his holy book, Aud Bilah Minash Rajim, وَإِنْ كَانَ ذُو عَسْرَةٍ فَنَذِرَةٌ إِلَى مَا سَرَحْ وَأَنْ تَصَدَّقُوا خَيْرٌ لَكُمْ إِنْ كُنْتُمْ تَعْلَمُونَ uh, Admittedly, the COVID pandemic has played a role in the economic slowdown, both macro and microeconomic. The role of COVID has indirectly slowed economic growth in almost all sectors, goods, services, and also finance. What happened uh, when this pandemic hit us all? One of which was the tendency of insolvency and, and a decrease in cash flow for bank financing customer, which led to problematic financing, of course. Based on this fact, Islamic Bank in Indonesia has implemented a restructuring policy for financing customer affected by COVID affected directly by COVID, either with an extension of time, either with an extension of time, tenor, I mean, margin, dis margin discount, or a change in some necess necessary condition according to the customer ability. The fatwa of DSNUI, our mufti, uh, number uh, 48, uh, 2005, Regulate the rescheduling mechanism for Murabaha financing bills. Will be Sharia financial institution. Uh, may reschedule Murabaha bills for customer who cannot complete or repay their financing according to the agreed amount and time. With condition, with three conditions. One, uh, do not add to the remaining bill amount is one thing, the first thing. And second, the costs involved in the rescheduling process are real costs, not potential loss. And three, the extension of the payment period must be based on the agreement of both parties, yani, uh, I mean between bank and customer. The government has also responded quickly to this pandemic situation especially policies related to the financing customer affected by COVID with program and on behalf of the National Economy Recovery. National Economy Recovery. The government provide margin subsidies for the banking financing customer affected by COVID. The Indonesian government policy for economic recovery during this pandemic is outlined in Government Regulation of Republic Indonesia Number 23 uh, concerning implementation of the National Economic Recovery Program in support of state financial policy for handling the COVID. 
and regulation of the Minister of Finance, Minister of Finance of Indonesia, I mean, number 98, concerning government guarantee procedure for corporate business actors through the designed guarantee business, and that is in the context of implementing the National Economic Recovery Program, and the last, Financial Services Authority Regulation, OJK, number 48, this year, concerning amendment from the Financial Services Authority Regulation, number 11, concerning National Economic Stimulus as a counter, counter, -cyclical, counter cyclical policy impact on the spread of conor, con, coronavirus disease in 2019. Dr. Fatin. Um, May Allah lift this harm uh, from uh, the Ummah, inshallah. Uh, such a, inshallah, uh, you know, inshallah. steps has been taken to restructure finance for the underprivileged and considering the situation. My next question is, what is the role of technology, especially Islamic finance fintech, to simplify everyday transactions? Are there any Sharia issues that need to be highlighted in this regard before embarking for Islamic banks to offer, uh, you know, Islamic fintech solutions? Uh, Dr. Iman, can you uh, uh, discuss this uh, aspect? Then I'll move to the Indonesian perspective. Um, thank you very much, Dr. Fatin. Uh, very interesting because uh, fintech now uh, one of the leading, you know, uh, non-banking uh, we call it non-banking uh, financial solutions uh, to those who are not able to. Uh, to go to the bank because, in the, for example, for those who are unbankable, uh, the, uh, many people now try to uh, find, you know, a faster solution without, uh, you know, any uh, any delay. Uh, so that's why uh, why because, uh, fintech is uh, one of the uh, fastest uh, growth in uh, in terms of financing because uh, it is easy uh, for people to uh, get uh, in uh, that uh, financing. Uh, I think this is one of uh, you know a still you know uh, a challenge market in Oman because uh, we don't have uh, so much a player in the in the fintech uh, unless any uh, uh, compared to Indonesia and Malaysia uh, and uh, uh, Dubai and uh, UAE there there are uh, some players players even uh, I see one of the report in the in Indonesia and Malaysia the the fintech growth is reached into the uh, triple digit, uh, more than 100% of uh, growth, and uh, with uh, reaching, I think, one of the biggest uh, fintech in Indonesia is Investry. Uh, maybe uh, Dr. Sabto will elaborate more. For, uh, yes, for Oman, I think this is one of, uh, in, for, in, for Oman, it is uh, one of the, you know, uh, the good business that we, ha we, we uh, will have to have. Uh, because, for example, next, uh, for example, I want to have a, a car financing. I don't need to go to the bank. It is easy for me to go through the phone with the, uh, with the, you know, uh, uh, having uh, all the requirements and, uh, for example, as well as salaries. And then uh, I can have that uh, car within one day uh, without uh, uh, going through all, you know, the, all the process that normally the uh, banks did. Uh, this is one of the potential market that we need to grow uh, in Oman. Uh, Thank I you think very much, uh, because Dr. Oman, still, uh, we we are still uh, uh, focusing on uh, on Evalet because uh, uh, I think one of the bank that are focusing on this Evalet they are uh, collaborating with uh, one Omantel, one of the big uh, leading you know uh, tele tele telecommunications companies in Oman. Uh, yes. So I think uh, the, uh, uh, Indonesia and uh, Satapto is able to you know, answer because the Indonesia is one of the leading market in the fintech. Certainly. Mr. Sabto, can you elaborate uh, on this specifically that I know in Indonesia, uh, yes, you have a highest uh, uh, population of uh, Muslims in all Islamic countries, but then you have a non-Muslim population. So do you have uh, uh, Islamic fintech or like specifically halal oriented, uh, you know, uh, e-markets for your audience members and how do you do it? It's quite interesting. If it's 100% growth, there must be so many things happening. So, uh, uh, you know, enlighten us. Thank you, Dr. Fatin and Dr. Iman. 
Not doubt that our country in Indonesia in the, is the largest Muslim population in the world. Uh, uh, and we do not doubt the role of technology in all fields, including in business activities, including banks, finance and institution, capital market, economic center, and etc. Financial technology or fintech itself is an innovation in the field of financial services. Fintech is a type of company in the financial services sector that is combined with technology, of course. It can also be interpreted as a segment in startup world that have to maximize the use of technology to sharpen, change, and accelerate various aspects of financial services. So starting from payment method, fund transfer, loan, fundraising to asset management can be done quickly and briefly to use of modern modern technology, Dr. Fatin. And fintech companies uh, as business entities, entities, entities consist of conventional and sharia in our country. Conventional fintech and sharia fintech. In our country, Indonesia, there are around 100 and 151 fintech entities, company, I mean, and 11 of them have operated with Sharia principle. Just 11 of them operate with Sharia principle, Dr. Fatin, and all the adjoin in this forum. Commonly known type of fintech are peer-to-peer uh, -peer lending, fund crowd, and payment gateway. Uh, fintech entities play a significant role in financial services. Financial inclusion that in Indonesia, the uh, Indonesia is very uh, life, low level of financial inclusion, uh, which is targeted to reach about 75% and also provide financing with a margin level in line with expectation. Before the existence of fintech, small medium prior in Indonesia relied on financing from bank to get working capital because bank is something difficult procedure a difficult procedure difficult approval and then uh, they went and go to the fintech company entities because they think fintech entities and company is easier than bank in procedure uh, sharia bank make fintech entities as business partner where islamic bank also distribute distribute working capital financing to sharia fintech companies yet we are uh, uh, joining in business with fintech uh, companies or entities uh, named by linkage program the application of fintech in indonesia itself is stated in several official regulation from the government from bank indonesia so here are three legal or i mean uh, government law based regarding fintech indonesia bank indonesia circular letter number 18 uh, about regarding to the implementation of digital financial services and number two bank indonesia regulation number 18 to concerning electronic money uh, and number three bank indonesia regulation concerning to the implementation of payment of transaction processing uh, the government made uh, regulation is expected to enable fintech provider and user to carry out various financial activities more comfortably and safely in terms of processing data and information, of course. Fintech in Indonesia is considered to, considered to have no Sharia issues, Dr. Fatih, because it is because our Mufti, the SNMUI, is always the party with the authority to issue fatwa, especially in the field of Islamic economic muamala, has issued the fatwa number 117 concerning information technology based financing services based on Sharia principle. The information technology based financing services based on Sharia principle is the provision of financial services based on Sharia principle that bring together or connect a financing provider with a financing recipient in order to make a financing 
contract through an electronic system using the internet network. The impl implementation of fintech services might not conflict with Sharia principles, as we know. Yeah. Namely, among others, avoidant usury, usury, goror, measure, tedris, doror, zulum, and haram, and complaints suitable with Makoshi Bishari, of course. Oh, the contract used by the parties in the provision of information technology based financing services uh, can be in the form of contract that are in line with the characteristic of financing services, including. Uh, Albay contract, Albay, Laisa, uh, not it is not Murubah, but Albay, Ijaro, uh, Muduroba, Musharoka, Wakala Bil Ujro, and Kork. The discussion okay. uh, that I think is related about related uh, e wallet and e money to Dr. Fatih. Thank you. Wonderful. Uh, this is amazing the involvement of fintech. Uh, in Indonesia and the variety and the simplification, I mean, for uh, everyday life, it is uh, wonderful. And I think this is something that we can learn as a best practice uh, for us in the region, as Dr. Ahmed, uh, uh, Ayman suggested. So uh, really valuable. Uh, before I go to Dr. Ayman, I would like to pick up with uh, uh, Mr. Sabtu. Now we spoke, uh, you did speak about, uh, you know, fundraising. Can you uh, uh, enlighten us with reference to microfinance uh, fintech platforms or uh, what is exactly done to, uh, you know, uh, include everyone, financial inclusion in Indonesia uh, when it comes to the technologies now available and how you can take it on board uh, now to take a really serious step to bring everybody together in the same platform? Yes, thank you, Dr. Fatin. Micro segment is one of our portfolio financing Islamic bank in Indonesia, of course. Uh, Ms. Dekon, wa amalan likolihi ta'ala, a'udhu bila mina shaytani rajim, likaila yakuna dulatan bain al-agniya iminkum. That's one of the Sharia norm that attract our attention is that wealth should not be distributed only among the rich only but must also be, be distributed to those with low economic level, of course. Apart from this principle and norm, the small medium, our micro sector, is one of the determinant and barometer of nation economy. Islamic bank in Indonesia are also involved and in, in financing and developing the sector, Dr. Fatin and all idea. Sharia Bank in Indonesia are involved in financing micro sector. This can be seen apart from one of the stated mission, especially in our bank, Bank Sari Mandiri. One of our mission is to give financing to micro sector, namely the distribution of financing to micro sector as much as uh, about 2.6 billion USD. 2.6 billion USD, or it, it, it is equal to 36.36 trillion rupiah. It's very much amount of our facilities, facility financing to give to the micro sector. OJK, Financial Services Authority, with its regulation, has stipulated the every Sharia bank Every Sharia bank in Indonesia is required and us and demand to allocate their financing to micro sector at least at least 20% of its total portfolio. 20% of its total portfolio. That the obligation, the obligation of every Sharia bank in Indonesia to allocate their financing uh, to the micro uh, sector or segment. Thank you, Dr. Fatin. MashaAllah. Uh, Dr. Ayman, can you uh, also uh, lay out the Omani, uh, you know, regulatory requirements when it comes to banks in terms of financing the uh, uh, small and medium enterprises in the micro sector? All right. Uh, thank you, Dr. Fatin. Uh, yes, uh, uh, because this is one of the, you know, uh, part that we are 
you know, cannot be uh, avoided because the micro and small enterprises is one uh, among our, you know, uh, major customers in Islamic banks in Oman. Uh, especially uh, in the bank, we are uh, having a specific, you know, uh, department who are handling the uh, SME. So uh, small and medium um, uh, enterprises, uh, one of the uh, very important in their part in Islamic banking in Oman. Uh, therefore, uh, those uh, who are affected much in uh, during this uh, COVID-19 is uh, SME, as uh, <coughs> one of my papers uh, that published uh, by Islamic Finance News, uh, taking this concern because uh, 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 those who are, you know, uh, because there is a limitation of movement between the, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, government to government, be between the cities to cities. The, do, uh, so that's why a small and medium enterprises uh, is one of the most affected, you know, uh, part uh, during this COVID-19. Uh, so that's why uh, this is a, a very, you know, uh, important part that uh, government also uh, uh, has to, you know, uh, play a role, not only, uh, you know, banking sector, but also from the government part as well. Uh, I think that's uh, uh, from Oman's perspective. Uh, Dr. Fatin, uh, Sheikh Hansor is, is just joined us. Uh, uh, mashallah, yeah, I can see him. Thank you very much for the elaboration, Dr. Ayman. So, uh, uh, Dr. Ashraf, uh, we are very happy to have you on board. Uh, I understand that you had uh, an issue probably, I don't know what exactly. <laughs> We'd welcome you, and uh, uh, I'm very happy to have the Malaysian perspective so we can complete the cycle. We discussed about, uh, you know, Sharia issues uh, so far in the beginning of the session concerning, uh, you know, the regulatory perspective, the standards uh, that have been followed between Oman and Indonesia. We did ask about Islamic fintech as well, and, you know, the initiatives uh, introduced in both countries. And finally, we did discuss about microfinance, specifically in post-pandemic era, uh, there is a need to, uh, you know, uh, for a better financial inclusion for all sectors. So uh, can you shed a light, uh, uh, Sheikh Ashraf, on the, uh, you know, Malaysian perspective when it comes to uh, financial inclusion and uh, microfinancing initiatives available in Malaysia? <coughs> okay. Alhamdulillah, wa salatu salam wa rasulillah. Um, when it comes to microfinance and financial inclusion, I guess those are two different uh, uh, things because uh, typically when you talk about financial inclusion, one of the measures that is used uh, is, you know, bank, you know, percentage of, of people with bank accounts. And I think in Malaysia, it's uh, very high compared to some other, you know, uh, developing countries. So we don't really have that uh, issue. Um, but I think really it's more about uh, financial empowerment. Um, and how to uh, uh, have more things that relate to uh, financial empowerment. So I think microfinance uh, hasn't is not very big um, based on my experience. I mean, of course, I'm working in a bank, and we have done some experiments in, in uh, microfinance uh, with some uh, universities. We did one with, um, with UIA um, where we gave a grant where they uh, did uh, microfinancing um, for small entrepreneurs, but uh, <clears throat> frankly, it, it was it was very difficult. The repayment was uh, not very good. So, um, and maybe there's various reasons why that happened. We're still trying to tweak that and make it better. Um, we have done things, at least from our side, with uh, helping small entrepreneurs through grants. So I think that's not just us. Others are doing that as well. Um, there are some uh, non-financial uh, uh, institutions, uh, non-bank uh, uh, institutions associated with the government that have some microfinance uh, initiatives. Um, another area that we've seen some microfinance in the banking sector is uh, with the small businesses. So, uh, you know, there are, it can be called microfinance, but it's, it's more like small level SME uh, lending. Uh, so I think that's just a few thoughts maybe on the, uh, on the microfinance side. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Sheikh Ashraf. I know that you are an avid ESG uh, supporter. 
Uh, in fact, uh, I did meet you in Malaysia, in which you uh, even uh, introduced the idea of, you know, Sharia and ESG in alignment, because at the end of the day, it is, uh, uh, you know, moving forward with the uh, Maqasid Sharia agenda. So how realistic we will see this alignment coming in the, whole, uh, in the near future? Okay, yeah, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. And I, I remember fondly our time here and mashallah, you know, it's nice to see you on the other side, you know, in Oman. Yeah, may Allah give you tawfiq. Uh, and, and I think you can answer a lot of these questions better than I can, but inshallah, yeah. When it comes to uh, ESG and, and, and Sharia and Maqasid, there's been a lot of discussion on this. Uh, I spoke on a panel recently with Ayofi and I think Brother Radwan here as well uh, on, on a similar... Um, topic uh but i mean really when you look at the essence of what islamic banking is right it's about um right which is you know attaining benefit and removing harm and and if you expand that you can say to individuals and society and if you expand it give more detail you can say in this world and the next world and if you expand it further you can say with particular emphasis on the protection of religion and life and family and intellect and wealth, right? And dignity. So, so that could be a, a broad sort of understanding of what um, of what Islamic banking is. And if you look at ESG, really is the essence of ESG is mitigation of environmental and social harm, right? So this is just a subset of Sharia, you know, and, and a subset of the basic Sharia principle, which is la darar wa la dirar. You're not supposed to commit harm or reciprocate harm. Um, and our standards historically in, in our ummah were very, very detailed to the extent that I believe in the Ottoman Empire, when they were fixing the walls, the Sultan told the, the, the masons who were fixing the walls because sometimes there would be holes in the, in the walls, that before you, you put the spackling or the you know, concrete over the wall, Check each hole to see if there's any creatures living inside there, any birds, anything, because you don't want to cover it and then kill them. To that extent, you talk about ESG, we were thinking to that level, right? So this issue is part and parcel of Sharia, I, you know, and it is in the IOFI standards and the CSR standard. It does talk about this, of looking at the environmental and social impact. I think people would ask, then how come we're only talking about it now? How come, you know, Islamic wasn't in the forefront uh, of ESG, right? And I think that uh, Sharia scholars are also pragmatic. They, the fear was, you know, to try, if you try to impose everything perfectly, you'll lose everything. So the idea is step by step, you know, and uh, Omar ibn Abdulaziz has a famous, you know, the very famous Khalifa, uh, you know, the, the considered one of the Khulafa al-Rashidin, you know, and, and that, he uh, he had a very, very religious son. And his son said, oh, father, why are you implementing Sharia in such a slow way? Because I am ready for you and I to be burned, boiled in oil for the sake of Allah, right? I'm ready to die for the sake of Allah, right? Why are we? And then he told him, I had the same, I share the same sentiment as you. But isn't it enough that every day we, he said, I'm afraid if I implement everything at once, People will reject it all at once. But isn't it enough that every day we bring forth a sunnah and we put back a bid'ah? So I think that was his, Omar ibn Abdaziz, you know, methodology. And I think the scholars in Islamic finance, somehow they, I believe that they had this ESG in their mind. The tools weren't there in the early days. And I think they wanted to take things gradually. Um, but now is the time. The tools are here, right? Uh, and the standards are here. So I really personally don't think that we have an excuse not to mm -hmm. uh, not to adopt the best uh, standards out there. Wonderful, wonderful. So gradual incremental change. That's what we're looking for in the near future. So uh, can I uh, ask uh, uh, Mr. Sabtu regarding ESG in uh, Indonesia? How is the development and how is the mindset over there? Is there is a receptivity to ESG integration in the banking sector, in the Islamic banking sector? Uh, we can't hear you, Mr. Sabtu. Yes. Excuse me, uh, your question is not clear. Uh, yes. Regarding the integration of environmental, social, and governance uh, standards within Islamic banks, 
uh, what is the direction uh, implemented or uh, 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 the integration of ESG standards in Islamic banks? How it is done in uh, uh, Indonesia? Is this is there is a receptivity to the integration of ESG? You mean integration of three bank in Sharia bank in Indonesia? Yes. Yes, uh, it is a direction and disposition directly from our minister mm. uh, that Indonesia has to be one Sharia bank, the biggest Sharia bank, and ready to to go global globally to go globally. Uh, and and second, uh, we hope uh, uh, this integration uh, three Sharia bank, uh, bank Sharia Indonesia, uh, bank Sharia Mandiri. Bank uh, Negara Indonesia Syariah and Bank Rakyat Indonesia Syariah will be have the strong equity that mm. uh, could accelerate and develop the business expansion, of course, because the equity of the bank is like our, our blood in our bloody. So the, this integration is very important for economic development through Islamic Bank in Indonesia. And second mm -hmm. hope is this integration. We hope Indonesia will be uh, better in their uh, market Sharia market share. That until now, with this country, as you know, that Indonesia is the most, the largest most population Muslim population in the world. But market share of this country is just only six to seven percent only. This mm -hmm. very far. Uh, there, th there are many, many uh, homework for us. The first financial inclusion level is very low. Uh, secondly, uh, literacy, Sharia literacy to our society, that's very low too. And how to the patient of our society to go to the Islamic bank is very low too. Uh, and the regulation, our regulation from our government, uh, central bank or financial services authority or ministry of finance or other regulator or fatwa by our mufti days and MOE is has to be suitable and compete to the market of course uh, the, uh, uh, and we have this integration uh, merger of consists of three Sharia bank in Indonesia will be uh, better in their business and business expansion I mean and will be one of uh, top 10 in the world, Sharia Bank, inshallah, be it nila. And uh, our government, uh, they uh, uh, very, very highly supported for this, for this condition, uh, for this integration program. And we are, as an employee, as an employee in this bank, of course, we would like to support this fully, fully support for this integration and give the best effort and uh, business for maslahatul uh, ummah, maslahatul ummah, that uh, bank Sharia, Sharia bank that uh, that is not for looking for the profit only, of course, but people mm -hmm. aspect and planet aspect too. That suitable with our makosidu Sharia, hafdul mal, hafdul nasl, hafdul akal, hafdul din, hafdul nafsus, wa zida bi ahad min ulama Indonesia, hafdul bia, wa hafdul arab. This Im implementation Makosidu Sharia will be better with this integration because Alhamdulillah, praise to be Allah, in uh, 2015, 2015, Islamic Bank Indonesia, especially for Bank Sharia Mandiri, has achieved uh, the highest index in implementation of Makosidu Sharia, Sharia Bank in the world, according according to the uh, recent result of Professor Asute for Durham University, uh, mm -hmm. that BSM, Bank Sari Mandiri, is, has the highest index of implementation of Makro Sidi Sharia. Uh, that all our hope for this integration three, uh, three, three Sharia bank to be one entity and to be one uh, Sharia bank. The biggest Thank you very much. Thank you to uh, globally uh, to to be to top 10 in the world, inshallah. Be it inshallah, inshallah. So I'll take the question to Dr. Ayman. Uh, now, Oman is a signatory for uh, the Sustainable Development Goals, and we have, uh, you know, an agenda when it comes to uh, sustainability and as well 
you know, integration of ESG within our practices. Uh, where do you think we are at the moment and how we can head in the right direction when it comes to ESG integration and sustainability practices? Okay, Dr. Fatin, thank you very much. This is very in interesting questions. Uh, first part, uh, when I was asked uh, uh, from the you know, uh, public uh, regarding the ESG, uh, then I, uh, I asked them back, uh, you know, uh, what in a, is a, your purpose to having ESG in your uh, part of investments? Uh, they said because of uh, having the ESG in, uh, in the first part, uh, we are able to see uh, whether this company they are following the uh, rules and and uh, and the conditions of the, has been stated in the country or not. Because uh, when you are uh, not following the you know the uh, proper you know environmental and social you know impact of your company, uh, of course, in in, in uh, for example, in the next one two years, your company will be in trouble. For example, there are in uh, some country we can see. Uh, people demonstrate because of this company, uh, they are, you know, uh, throwing the, uh, you know, the, uh, you know, uh, west in, uh, in not in proper, you know, uh, place. So it will affect the environmental in uh, environments in that city in in area. Uh, so uh, then I uh, responded back to them. Uh, you know, uh, uh, Sharia, uh, we are, has been, you know, uh, discussed long time back regarding the environment and social in, and governance impact as well. Uh, uh, from the Sharia perspective, we have been discussed the, the Makosid uh, in a Sharia long time back because uh, if you are uh, want to have a good life, you have to have a good environment. So you have, you are not allowed to cut the trees unless you have a, uh, a permission from the governments. Uh, so that's why it is uh, it is already implemented in you know in Oman. Uh, you are not allowed to cut the tree. At least you are uh, you know, have the permission from the local authorities. Uh, so uh, Sharia is supporting on the uh, on this one in uh, in ESG uh, in the in, in the full page, right? Uh, so uh, Sharia. That's why it should come in the forefront. As the uh, chef and Ashraf uh, mentioned in the beginning, we have to become uh, a first person to. You know, um, implement the ESG uh, because the uh, uh, Makose Sharia has been you know, uh, saying that from long time back. Now the second issue is coming. Can we implement this uh, uh, in our you know Islamic banking, especially investment in banking in investment bank? Uh, that is the uh, second part. Because if we want to implement this one, uh, there are many companies that are not you know matched with the requirements of ESG. For example, we can see one company. Uh, from, from the finance perspective, for example, if you want to give a financing to this company, uh, where in his, you know, uh, you know, uh, financial report, we are uh, any, you know, uh, getting that this company is not comply with the ESG rules, for example, while this company is not one, it, it is more than one. So is it, uh, you know, uh, the Islamic bank has to stop the financing? Of course not. So we are, uh, after discussing with our Sharia scholars that, Okay, fine. We are looking at the lowest, you know, uh, you know, uh, uh, companies that uh, they are implementing the ESGs, not not in on the highest uh, uh, standard of ESGs. At least they are uh, taking care of the ESGs apart on the of their companies. Uh, Thank you very much. And the second thing, uh, uh, yeah, because of uh, when I ask the people why uh, European, especially the investment, why you are investing in ESGs, you know. Uh, com in a company because as per uh, in, uh, their perspective, those companies who are implementing ESG because the third part of ESG is governance. Uh, the government is the company is they are implementing a proper you know reporting you know a proper you know a treatment to the employees. This company will you know uh, sustain long in a compared to those who are not you know in uh, embark with this you know uh, ESG requirements. Uh, okay. Thank you, Dr. Fadden. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I have a request of commenting. We actually have a Q&A session at the end. Oh, oh, uh, is it uh, Mr. Mr. Ashraf? Yes, go ahead, Sheikh Ashraf. Okay, yeah, it's, a, it's a long way. It's a long way. I have to say, Mr. Ashraf, uh, before you, uh, you know, 
uh, speak about it. Uh, uh, I think it's also changing the mindset. Always we speak about changing the mindset when it comes to Islamic finance. But I think now the challenge is doubled. Changing the mindset to be Sharia compliant and ESG compliant. Go ahead, Mr. Ashraf. I just want to comment on our journey, you know, uh, um, with this, because personally I had an interesting journey because as soon as I joined the bank, I, um, uh, because I understood that the CEO of CMB Islamic at the time, Mr. Rafi Hanif, wanted to take Islamic finance from just halal to halal and tayyib, according to his language. And and uh, so I presented a uh, the OIC resolution on the environment. It's a very, very strongly worded resolution um, for the ummah uh, that basically anything that's unsustainable really uh, is generally not allowed. Uh, but the thing is that that was never implemented as a standard, you know, in Islamic finance. So I wanted the scholars to to sort of um, endorse that fatwa and make it mandatory on all of uh, on the bank. And because if the scholars say that this is part of Sharia, it would become mandatory. And even here in in Malaysia, uh, there is a framework that if the scholars can impose something over and above the rules of the uh, of the Central Sharia Board (SAC), um, they have to do it in in discussion with the board of the bank. So the board of the bank can disagree, but they can um, uh, put this forward. Uh, the thing is, the scholars, and we basically said that we should suggest it to sign on to the Global Compact and UNPRI and, and uh, these various uh, agreements that will put you in a community that will help you to actually implement ESG. Because you can't do it by yourself. You need to be part of a community. And that's actually what the fatwa said. The fatwa said that you should sign on to agreements, you know, where where um, uh, that that supports, you know, ESG. What the the scholars' biggest concern was: Will you be able to? They had two main concerns. One: Will you be able to implement this? And you're going to need an entire department. And we don't want to put this as an obligation, and you're not able to fulfill it because that will cause bigger problems for you. The second one is: They wanted an intelligent. Sharia informed balanced implementation of ESG, not something that blindly following the West, you know, um, because, you know, everybody has interest in the end of the day, you know, so so there might be, uh, you know, uh, 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 certain standards for certain agricultural products and, uh, and no lack of standards for another one. And somehow it disadvantages Muslim countries and and Muslim workers. So they wanted they said, yes. We are completely supportive, but make sure before you make this an obligation on yourself, you have the ability to do it and make sure that when you're implementing it, you don't do it in a way that is may have more harm than good. Make sure that you do it in an intelligent, balanced way, taking into consideration the uh, the prioritizations of, you know, that Sharia put forth, you know, puts forward. So anyway, I just wanted to. And then in the end of the day, they. The scholars decided to make it a recommend a strong recommendation instead of making it a formal, you know, Sharia requirement. And then the board is the one that decided to actually um, take it forward as a strategic agenda, and it became part of the strategy of the entire institution. Um, so yeah, and that's kind of our our journey, and it's a it's a learning journey. It's not like Sharia compliance because, as as our brother Muhammad mentioned, it's not black or white. You're either compliant or you're not. ESG is it's a it's a gradient, you know, and it's a conversation where you engage with the client and you say, OK, where you are now and we want you to get better. You know what standards do you have now? How will you improve in this period of time? And it, it's a, something that's relative. You know, it's not black. Our Sharia rules a lot of times are more black and white. But even for ESG saying ESG compliant, people don't use that term. It's not it's not a relevant term ESG compliant. It's more ESG integration in your decision making. You know, so Allah knows best. I just wanted to share that point. Yes, Brother Ashraf, uh, uh, such an interesting topic. I see that you're very passionate talking about it. And I uh, do recall that I did have a conversation with Sheikh Nizam al-Yaqoubi, in which I felt, uh, since my PhD was on sustainability, actually, uh, that when he told uh, in the uh, conference that, uh, you know, the West is looking for their interest. So maximizing is their interest, meaning, you know, uh, putting aside, you know, uh, economies that are very based on fuel and gas and petrol. And, you know, it's a, a bit tricky for us uh, uh, down in this region. So, but th he did specify what you have specified, having specialists who are ready to do ES uh, ESG screening 
looking at sustainability practices. So my question to you is, we need people who are specialists in this particular area. Do we have universities who uh, prepare uh, these kind of uh, specialism? In the I mean, finance world? If, you, if you're asking me, I do believe that INSEF, in, you know, in their recent uh, um, development of their programs, they have developed the MBA with uh, social finance uh, element. Um, because I think they were also trying to think, you know, how do we move forward, you know, for Islamic finance education? Is it just going to be the contracts? So I think they, they uh, in, in, in in collaboration with the industry, they uh, decided to go in that route. So I can just speak at least um, here in Malaysia, INSEF, uh, also because I'm a graduate of INSEF, you know, and, and work with them. They do have uh, that. I think they are trying to prepare people. Who, uh, who are more proficient in social finance and ESG integration would be sort of one of the, 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 the most basic elements of social finance. Uh, but I think more to come, hopefully, inshallah. Inshallah. So uh, before we go to the Q&A session, I have only one last question to the panelists and then we'll move forward with the Q&A uh, session. Very interesting uh, deliberations since morning, mashallah. My uh, final question, then we will go to the uh, final word from the panelists. Is are the banks banking with people or banking on people? When will we see profit and loss sharing instruments activated further for the betterment uh, and the, uh, the advancement of society and economy as a whole? Uh, uh, Mr. Saptu, can you uh, provide us with the Indonesian perspective and then we'll move to the Omani and the Malaysian one? Okay, thank you, Dr. Patin, for the question. Um, I have to say frankly that Islamic norm and concept, basic concept of fiqh muamala, profit, uh, profit and loss sharing is the pure and original concept from our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. But uh, we find the differences with practice between shirka in our Prophet era and uh, the, in and its implementation in our modern. Uh, financial institution, of course, because it is it, it is because uh, practices in uh, our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam era is uh, one by one and personal by personal. It is very different. Uh, it we compare with Islamic bank concept as a intermediary institution that pooling of fund approach that we use pooling of fund approach many to many. And the Islamic bank is in the in the middle of surplus uh, sector and deficit sector. This one thing that that we have to know and we have to understand about the concept. Second, uh, currently distribution and of revenue in Indonesia with a uh, Mudroba or Musharoka contract uh, are still implement implementing the net revenue sharing system and have not implement profit sharing system, Dr. Fatin and all audience, my beloved audience. This is with the consideration of benefit and moderate and for, stake, for stakeholder. Apart from the apart from the existence of FATWA, our Mufti, uh, Sharia, uh, National Sharia Council, that allow for this concept, yeah, uh, I mean, uh, impl for implementing net revenue sharing, not profit sharing. It is because our infrastructure, IT, and society and environment is not support for implementing profit sharing. Financing with a partnership concept such as Mudoroba or Musharoka has the potential to create moral hazard, of course, moral hazard from the customer. Uh, in addition to the adverse selection aspect, adverse selection that customer will choose any contract and any term and condition that uh, give them uh, more benefit, more benefit. Uh, this uh, uh, stimulate, uh, stimulate, stimulate for the customer to, uh, to be uh, moral has to create moral hazard. I mean, this also stated in Quran Surah Shad, verse twenty four, maybe. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم وإن كثيرا من الخلطاء لا يبغي بعضهم على بعض 
ilalladina amanu wa amilu salihat wa qaliru mahum uh, this verse uh, explain to us that the people who unite them in shirkah contract uh, imma an takuna mudarabatan wa imma an takuna musyarakatan partially do wrong to some of the others do wrong to some of the others moral hazard ini It, because musyaroka and mudoroba is trust financing not like moroba contract that uh, just only one short deal uh, ex, uh, so shirka like mudoroba and musyaroka is uh, is very potentially to create for moral hazard for the customer except but quran said except for those who believe ilal ladina amanu and do red those deed wa amilus salihat Uh, and very few of them uh, there, based on this uh, phase uh, we are in Indonesia and based on our mufti fatwa DS and MUI, we we has we have implement uh, net revenue sharing not profit sharing and uh, because uh, profit sharing is very difficult it is hard to us to implement for this system and this concept because our infrastructure and society and people and our customer is not uh, enough to require a minimum threshold capacity for implementing profit sharing concept. Dr. Fatin, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Dr. Ayman, banks, are they banking on people or with people? Okay, uh, Dr. Martin, thank you very much. Very interesting questions because uh, this uh, word is uh, uh, actually are the banks are uh, the main objective of the Islamic bank is the profit maximization or there is a, so, a social you know, uh, objective. Uh, when we are in a talk about Islamic bank, we have to combine both uh, because we are working for the shareholders. We are working from the funds, you know, Uh, you know, uh, third-party funds. Uh, we are balancing between the uh, deficit and, uh, and and surplus union because we are not able to uh, implement a, a one part, but we are in, uh, neglecting the other part. So uh, we have to balance uh, between the two. We are, uh, of course, uh, the shareholders. They are asking us to. Uh, give us the better, you know, performance in a year by year. But on the other part, also we have to uh, also perform our social responsibility in this. Part. So that's why in in the in choosing the uh, you know the contract itself, not uh, you know uh, because we are freely to choose which contract you want to use. Either you want to implement a profit and loss sharing. And the you are wants to implement, you know, uh, a buy and sell. So it depends on the market conditions, uh, because the majority of the people they, they are required is to buy and sell. So that's why majority of the contract in the Islamic banking is a murabaha, ba' al mustawa, and other part of a uh, sell and, and uh, a sell, you know, uh, contract. Uh, so when they come into in a profit or sharing in Oman, we are implementing, you know, uh, also. Uh, you know, Modoroba contract, but not in financing on the asset side. We are implementing from the liability side because uh, it's easy for us to control uh, and, and to make sure that the uh, majority of our, you know, uh, asset size are, you know, uh, good quality of assets. So that uh, we are able to uh, provide a good return to our, you know, uh, Modoroba investment holders. So that's why uh, we Why in uh, in Oman in, uh, we are not implementing Moldova uh, profit and loss sharing on the asset side because it is not easy to monitor the uh, our customers because we if we are implementing this based on the purely you know uh, sharing perspective we have to you know uh, hire more people in order to maintain how the performance month by month weeks uh, by week so that's why <coughs> for the pure you know Moldova perspective you know, implementation. It's more suitable for microfinancing, you know, institutions because they, uh, what they are doing, they are, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, banking with uh, the people because they are uh, providing, you know, uh, financial literacy 
uh, providing training to the, the the customers so that they are able to repay back uh, uh, the you know the financing with the with the profit. Uh, so, uh, but in general, uh, while you know uh, it comes into the you know during this COVID-19 outbreak, yes, we are in uh, focusing much more on social uh, the impact of the you know our customers. If uh, if our customers are they are uh, you know mostly affected, uh, we are even uh, providing them uh, you know structuring and rescheduling for their financing, so that uh, so that they are able to grow you know uh, much better even we are giving them you know holiday in installment for the six to nine months so uh, during this and uh, for example nine months six months they are not obliged to pay anything during this uh, you know uh, COVID-19 outbreak in a, uh, era uh, I think that's our from one uh, perspective thank you very much very interesting and very detailed uh Sheikh Ashraf Alhamdulillah, uh, Jazakallah khair. Actually, uh, both of my, my colleagues, I agree 100% with uh, with uh, Ustad, uh, Sheikh Sabto, and uh, Dr. Ayman as well. Um, I think similar uh, concept here in Malaysia. Uh, when we look at, you know, the, the question is posed, you know, is it banking on people or banking with people? And I think obviously we cannot take advantage of people, right? We need to have a stakeholder mentality. Uh, we need to have an amana mentality, right? And and how can we maximize the benefit to society, right? So, so I think that, uh, but that is about really um, ESG integration will help with that and, and having a culture of, of positive impact, regardless of the form of financing. Now, when you talk about profit and loss sharing, I mean, personally, I've been thinking a lot about this and, um, here in Malaysia, I think where we see it, of course, in the fintech space, now we we have, uh, I think, the first uh, one of the, the first equity um, equity crowdfunding uh, uh, company has has uh, launched uh, very recently here. So in the fintech with equities, uh, th that's obviously going to be a uh, profit and loss sharing. Mm -hmm. um, of course, capital markets are there. Capital markets, we're not seeing really that much prof, uh, VC, venture capital, uh, in the Islamic space. And actually, this is where we should see profit and loss sharing because these are people who have the ability to put forth large amounts of money, uh, to uh, take board seats, to add value, right, and take the risk and make the return. The reality of the matter is VC is very risky, and the majority of VCs actually don't make money um, based on uh, some statistics. Um, but that's where we should see the profit and loss sharing. Now, in the banking sector, the question really is, how do we um, give people something that they can bear and something that's beneficial for them? So the, the, uh, here in Malaysia, definitely, I think we, there's no profit and loss sharing on the asset side, uh, Mudarawa. And, and I think uh, this is general in the world in many, in many uh, places, at least in Indonesia and 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 uh, in Oman, as my respected colleagues mentioned, uh, because the experience has been that it's not uh, it's not a proper use of the money of the people, and it's probably it'll probably lead to losses. And similarly, when I was in Saudi Arabia, they started Islamic finance and my previous institution doing also mudaraba, and they found that they lost a lot of money. So typically, the people on the ground will tell you <laughs> that overwhelmingly in the banking space, well, thought about on the asset side is not beneficial. Um, maybe a mana is lost. Maybe you need to more actively monitor. Maybe the risks, maybe moral hazard, adverse selection, all of those issues. Now, where we see it more is on the liability side. So we have in Malaysia a very robust investment account framework for, uh, for investment accounts that are loss-bearing. Now, the issue here comes, and, and truthfully, on the ground, we're always discussing this. Uh, the framework says they are the investors are invested in the portfolio of the bank. If the if the portfolio loses, then we pass the loss to the investors. And COVID has been a time to test that. Are we really ready to let to pass the losses to the investors, to the people who maybe see themselves as depositors, right? And what's the risk if you pass the loss to them, right? That's really the issue. You know, I think Alhamdulillah. In Malaysia, overall, although we have a lot of investment accounts, nobody's really passing the risk, passing the loss to those uh, investment account holders. Mm -hmm. They get a bit of a better return um, because there are, there's no uh, deposit insurance and things like that. 
But are we ready to pass the, the loss to them? And are they ready to bear the loss? That's another issue, like our brother, you know, mentioned. So, so I think, you know, when it comes to profit and loss sharing, we have to allocate the risk to the party that's most willing and able to accept it. This is one of the principles of finance, right? Allocating the risk to the party that's most willing and able to accept it. And whether or not these small depositors are ready and willing to accept losses in their investment accounts, I don't know. But for large, more sophisticated investors, I think, inshallah, uh, hopefully we will start to see that. We have the instruments here in Malaysia, but um, uh, I think it's still a uh, work in progress. Uh, Allah knows best. Shana, thank you very much, uh, uh, all of the panelists, for the valuable time that you have uh, uh, dedicated today to uh, enlighten us and uh, uh, provide us this uh, uh, addition to our knowledge. Uh, really appreciate it. Uh, I'm going to uh, pass uh, to the panelists a final word to be given to the uh, you know members, and then we will go for a Q&A session. I can see that there is only, uh, for the moment, uh, for the audience members who would like to ask questions, you can use the chat room to raise your questions or raise your hands. I'm going to share my screen so you can see where you can raise your hand. I hope that you can see my screen. This is my screen. So if you would like to raise your hands, you can use this uh, hand over here. Or you can write your questions uh, through the uh, chat uh, uh, function over here. So uh, last words and then Q and A session. Thank you. Uh, we'll start with the Indonesian okay, perspective. There, there is alphabetical one question order. on the chat. One question on the chat, Doctor Fatin. There is one yes. question. Uh, can we have final words from the panelists and then we'll go for the Q and A session? Thank you. Uh, we'll we'll start with the Indonesian perspective, Mr. Sabtu. Final words from the panelists. Yes. The question is, what would the best model of Islamic financial fatwa institution in Indonesia? Isn't the DSNMUI already followed the complete with standard of international regulatory framework? Thank you. This question, I think I have to answer it, Dr. Fatin. Uh, okay, go ahead. Uh, should okay. you feel that? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. <laughs> uh, uh, there is the best model in Islamic financial fatwa institution in Indonesia because in our country applied in uh, with one institution of fatwa, yani Sharia National Council, Majlis Ulama Indonesia, and there is no uh, in institution that issued the fatwa except this only one institution. The, uh, uh, I cannot say that. And there is the best model of Islamic fatwa in Indonesia because in our country, Indonesia, is uh, there is one only institution that have uh, authority for issuing the fatwa. And uh, second, is the ideas, and we already followed the can complete with standard of international regulatory framework. Of course, many, many of fatwa, yes, many of fatwa, uh, according to the istihad of ideas and we. Because al istihad layang kudul istihad, uh, one istihad uh, is uh, do not do not does not reject can reject the other istihad, because uh, every al alim uh, Islamic scholar uh, can produce and issue the fatwa with their competency and capacity Sharia capacity of course. Wali an Nabi an Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam kal idha istihad al hakim fa asabah falahu adran. Yani, there is no sin and there is no uh, fault of every Islamic scholar in processing their fatwa to for the ummah. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, Dr. Ayman, final words, and then we'll take a, a question from the uh, audience. Um, right. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Fatin. This is very interesting, you know, uh, discussions. I uh, would like to have, we, ha we will have uh, more discussion in the future, especially, uh, you know, because comparing the uh, different jurisdictions is quite, you know, uh, interesting uh, because we need to learn also from others uh, because uh, uh, because every day is learning. So uh, that's why thank you very much for CBFS uh, for a conduct, you know, uh, on the decisions. Uh, I think uh, that's uh, my last word. Uh, because we have uh, uh, audience that uh, they want to ask questions. Uh, thank you, Dr. Fatin. 
Thank you very much. Uh, Sheikh Ashraf, final words? Alhamdulillah. Um, I don't think I have really much to say except, you know, you know, really to thank you and actually to apologize. Please uh, forgive me for, for uh, joining late. Um, and then I really look forward to hearing uh, from uh, all of the audience. I think that that overall we have to be looking at how in, in this, you know, Islamic finance, because we have the word Islamic there, we have to serve others. And we have to do something that really the Prophet Sallallahu if he saw it, he would be proud of it. And, and we should uh, not seek just to do something halal, but to do something beautiful. Uh, so I think we can always use that as a test to ask ourselves, not is this halal, but is this beautiful? Is this ihsan? Would the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam be, uh, you know, be proud that his ummah is doing this thing? And hopefully if we take that as our compass, we will be going in the right direction. Inshallah, may Allah give us uh, tawfiq to do that. Inshallah. So we'll take one question. Thank you very much, uh, Sheikh Ashraf. And uh, no worries. Uh, we'll take your apology forward. You have to promise uh, promise to make it up to us in future with a uh, different uh, uh, program. <laughs> we'll, we'll come after you. Uh, so uh, we'll take one question. I can see one hand uh, over here, Mr. Aydin Afan. Uh, kindly unmute yourself. Uh, uh, introduce yourself. And tell us uh, to whom your question is addressed to as well. Go ahead. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Assalamu alaikum. from Indonesia. I also a uh, Sharia Bank practitioner and uh, I've been working also with uh, Mr. Sapto. Uh, I would like to answer, uh, add up some questions maybe to the uh, Ashraf and Muhammad Iman. Uh, this is about the uh, how in the Oman and also Malaysia uh, have the harmonization of communication between the Sharia Bank practitioner into the government because uh, we in Indonesia already have this uh, national committee it's under the presidential so is that at the highest level after the presidential we have the committee uh, Sharia Na national committee but uh, during the pandemic season. It seems that the government already released and stipulated some uh, policy uh, to stimulate the econo economic reviving. Uh, I'm sure that in Oman and also Malaysia have the same thing by the government uh, done the same thing too. But uh, I don't see that. I see there are some gap between the regulation from the government. Uh, for instance, I will give you a, a sample example for that. Uh, the placement fund from the government in a Sharia Bank, they require fixed return uh, of the placement. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know how to communicate uh, between the banking practitioner at this time uh, in the pandemic. Uh, maybe we are uh, releasing some regulation in the fastest way, quick win way, uh, you know. But uh, this is uh, based on the very basic thing that we should all wear, uh, which we have the uh, Mudaroba and uh, Wadiya, uh, why, the, why the government require the fixed uh, return on that. Uh, so what I would like to ask you is uh, to Dr. Uh, Iman and Dr. Asra, maybe, how do you uh, in your country have the harmonization of communication between the, between the banking practitioner with the government to release this kind of uh, uh, regulation, not only to the central bank or the uh, bank regulator, but also to the all the ministry. Because of this uh, pandemic, all looks like every ministry in Indonesia have their own regulation, have their own initiative to to revive the economy, and it does not seem to be communicated with the Sharia banking practitioner well. That's uh, my question. Thank you. So, yeah. If I can just comment on on sort of our experience i mean i think in in malaysia of course you know they uh worked on having a framework you know with the ifsa islamic financial services act and then the various and amending the various laws and things of that nature um but we do have industry bodies so we have a, a body of all the islamic banks um that has an audience you know with the central bank on a, on a regular basis um so there's these industry bodies that that interact with the central bank. 
uh, there is, uh, we, we have a culture of, I think this is an issue of culture, especially when it comes to the regulator and the financial institutions. It's a, it, you need to develop, I would say, a culture of openness and a culture of shura. وَأَمُرُهُمْ شُورَ بَيْنَهُمْ Right? So the matter should be based on shura. And, and that does happen uh, in general, um, especially when they come up with new regulations. Um, I think that uh, in light of this pandemic, uh, it's been challenging because uh, the, 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 the need to respond very quickly uh, uh, it, it makes it difficult to uh, have that same level of back and forth and that same level of engagement. Uh, so I think uh, some of the, uh, the, the, the interventions uh, have happened very, very quickly. And so we haven't been able to, to have that much of a, of a say in the discussion you know, on them. And even some of the fatwas that have come as well for the moratoriums and, and, and various fatwas against compounding and, and things like that. Um, I think as far as the other ministries, uh, definitely there is a need for more engagement. I mean, you know, we have had situations where, you know, uh, uh, the, the, uh, some ministries are putting money with us and it's Islamic bank and they want a guaranteed return. And, you know, the account that we have is, you know, qard or might be uh, based on mubaraba. You're not able to give a guaranteed return, but yet, you know, that's what they expect. So, so some of these types of issues, uh, you have to deal with them. I don't, I'm not aware personally in Malaysia whether there's like some formalized way for to communicate with people in other ministries, but definitely between the banking regulator and the Islamic banks, there are a number of, uh, of channels that are, that are used. Yeah, Allah knows better. Thank you, Sheikh Ashraf. Uh, uh, Dr. Ayman? Yes, uh, thank you very much, Dr. Ayman. This is uh... Correct. This is, you know, uh, the question is uh, quietly, uh, you know, uh, happen in the market where, and where the government's uh, requesting, you know, uh, fixed return when they are placing their funds in their Islamic banking. Uh, we, uh, what we did is that uh, we are trying to build a proper communication before we we comes into the uh, this, uh, expected return or fixed return. Uh, first is uh, we have to. You know, um, thank the uh, government that we are different country at conventional bank. Uh, what we did is that we cannot fix that. That's the, the, the first in the beginning. We cannot uh, fix the return because uh, uh, this is against the Sharia rules and principles. And this is one. However, and in normal circumstances, uh, normally we uh, our you know profit is normally higher than the uh, what you expected. So that's why. In normal circumstances, you will receive your, you know, uh, expected then what as per our agreed in the contract. So that's why in the beginning uh, we said uh, in the contract we are not able to give you a fix. But however, in normal circumstances you will receive your expected return because uh, uh, as per our calculations, our you know, uh, return is normally higher than uh, your expected profit as per the agreed in the contract. So that's why uh, what in is uh, you know. Um, and required is to build build the uh, proper communication to the ministries in order to uh, this is in order uh, uh, to provide them peace of mind that uh, the money will be uh, nowhere to go the, the money will be managed well and uh, we will receive your you know, uh, the the uh, return as per the agreed in the contract. Uh, I think that uh, and and the second I think that the 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 term of harmonize. This is the very important important point uh, because in Oman, uh, when we are launched the Islamic banking uh, in the beginning, uh, as per the Royal Decree 69 2012, uh, the government has been amended, uh, you know, uh, banking law and uh, you know uh, distributed this you know amendment to the uh, you know a concern a ministry, like, for example, Ministry of Housing. Uh, so that in the future there is no uh, debate uh, whether you are obliged to pay uh, fees or not, uh, whether in, in, in the beginning you are uh, obliged to pay 3% and, and then you have to pay another 3%. So this is, has been communicated uh, properly between the uh, government because this high level you know, uh, communications are required. In, uh, so that's why we we already, Oman has been uh, set up, the law is a uh, proper, you know, so the, they, they are building the communication between the ministry before, uh, you know, uh, launching the Islamic banks. So that's why the, the, there is a harmonization of the, you know, 
uh, low, uh, especially it's, when it's coming into the Islamic banking, uh, you know, uh, industries. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I see that there is no other questions. Uh, so again, I would like to thank uh, our panelists for their valuable time. Uh, we really appreciate the time that you have dedicated uh, with us today. I know it's a Sunday and uh, you, it's part of your weekend. So I uh, <laughs> uh, request Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to place it on the mizan of the hasanat. And inshallah, when this COVID-19 situation subsides, uh, you are more than welcome in your second country, Oman. Uh, we'd love to have you over and, uh, you know, discuss further on uh, Sharia issues. Uh, I close today's session by Kafarat al-Majlis. Uh, Subhanakallahumma rabbana wa bihamdika ashadu an la ilaha illa ant. Astaghfirq wa atubu ilayh. Thank you very much. And, uh, uh, Dr. Fatin. Yes, Mr. Sabda. Excuse me. Uh, just on this suggestion for me, uh, how do we take a picture together before leaving this forum? Oh, yes, I agree with you totally. So, uh, okay. <laughs> yes. Screenshot probably. Uh, okay. Dr. Uh, Ahmed, can you uh, everybody, like? hopefully, open uh, your camera, please. Yeah, if everybody can open the camera. Yes, I forgot about this nice, uh, yeah, please. very good memory. Audience, please uh, switch audience. on your camera so we can take a picture together. Uh, yes. We have a Sheikh Tariq from Sahara International. Ah, mashallah, Alin Sheikh Tariq. Hello, Yamara. It was an interesting uh, session, Saraha. We all got the benefit from all the Mashayikh and the Gatra from uh, the panelists. Thank you so much for arranging Dr. Fatin this uh, valuable session and hope, inshallah, to, to participate, inshallah, in your year in the future. Inshallah. inshallah. Jazakallah alfa khair. We are uh, very delighted to have you on board and all of you as well. Uh, Dr. Ayman, you have all the honor to take the uh, screenshot. Yes. Uh, uh, thank you, parents, for all. Hopefully, uh, uh, maybe after the pandemic, we uh, able to, you know, conduct the forums in Oman, where we, uh, you can uh, see the, you know, the Omans in Omanis cultures, uh, actually very nice people. Uh, I, I have a lot of, you know, our colleague, Indonesian colleague here from the banking industries. Uh, thank you very much for your attendance. Uh, my colleague from uh, Oman as well, Sheikh Tariq from uh, Bank Sohar International. Thank you very much. Uh, thank thank you. you for all. Uh, inshallah, we'll see you in, uh, in the next forum, inshallah, maybe in Oman uh, after the uh, COVID-19 outbreak. Inshallah. Uh, Dr. Ayman, have you taken a picture?